Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to take a look on SQL Server Configuration Manager options. In this video, we'll be taking a look on SQL Services Overview via Configuration Manager, SQL Server Services Protocols, uh, SQL Server Native Clients Overview, and Alias Configuration. So let's go ahead and go in the server where I have installed SQL Server 2014, and I'm going to go ahead and fire up SQL Server Configuration Manager. right here is SQL Server 2014 uh, configuration manager if you have installed any other version of SQL Server such as 2012 on the same server it would have SQL Server 2012 configuration manager so we're gonna go ahead since I have installed SQL Server 2014 so I'm going to go ahead and click on SQL Server 2014 configuration manager and the first thing we're going to take a look is SQL Server services these are the services when you install SQL Server any services or components that you select during your installation and they have a tendency to create a services on operating system and they are related to SQL Server all those services will appear in this pan right here as you can see SQL Server browsing services are here SQL Server uh, server is here this is my uh, instance name SQL mirror this is my instance name and if you have installed a SQL Server default instance it'll it'll say right here MS SQL uh, Server so right here and the SQL Server agent related to this instance right here and SQL Server full text um, filter daemon launcher these are the services uh, one thing I wanted to mention it if you get a request to restart the SQL services uh, always try always go and uh, fire up SQL Server configuration manager and restart the services from there and there are numerous reason to do that first of all is a dependency issue if you go in services and restart the SQL ser uh, services then uh, there would be a dependent application and those uh, s uh, SQL uh, those services needs to be restarted as well but this is highly related to SQL server and uh, also uh, other reason that I can think of is that if you have multiple SQL Server instances installed and multiple versions of SQL Server installed on the same server you don't want to make a mistake to restart a, 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 a SQL Server instance that you don't intend to basically restart so if you fire up the configuration manager it'll give you a good overview of uh, especially the configuration manager if there is a different version it has a different SQL Server configuration manager so it is a recommended way to use SQL Server configuration manager if you wanted to do anything with SQL Server services the next is SQL Server network configuration this is 32-bit if you have installed SQL Server 32-bit all the network configuration will appear right here since this is SQL Server 64 version let me expand that so uh, right here if you look at it SQL Server native client 11.0 configuration will be spending some time right here because uh, this is really important uh, right here um, their native client has two options one is the client protocols and other is aliases if any application that is compatible with the 32-bit native client and will not use 64-bit then you need to do all the configuration for that particular application in SQL Server native client 11.0 configuration 32-bit and it used to be called um, uh, DAC connection for Microsoft it's uh, now it's called um, MDAC uh, any app some application really use MDAC and it's replaced with the SQL Server native client and it, it is much more secure to use na SQL Server native client rather than MDAC uh, even though if I'll show you in a minute that um, when you fire up the management studio that also uses MDAC or uh, is also known as Windows DAC that's um, uh, data access Microsoft data access so up here there are three protocols shared memory protocol TCP IP named will be playing in a little bit with these and alias will be creating a new alias alias is just another way to connect to SQL Server if you wanted to if your SQL Server name is too big and you have some application that cannot uh, really compensate all those characters you can create an alias of that particular uh, SQL server and give alias to the application and they can put it in their config file and uh, they will be able to connect with SQL server 
and other up here this is very important right here protocols for sql server mirror this is highly related to the instance that you have installed or the configuration that you have fired up right here sql server configuration manager and you have named instance sql server mirror if you have a default instance default instance will appear right here and uh, these are the three protocols that um, enabled at this moment and we'll be uh, also going through the some of the demo that what it means that if we disable tcp ip protocol what will happen if uh, some application will try to connect with sql server so um native client this is 64 bit this is exactly like this but this is a 64 version and it has same options uh, client protocols and alias so let's go ahead and first uh, spend some time on protocol uh, uh, up here related to the particular instance that you're um, you know concerned about so we're gonna go ahead and fire up a SQL Server Management Studio keep in mind right now uh, shared memory named pipe and TCP IP protocol all three protocols are open so if you take a look and connect with SQL Server it will connect fine so what, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and disable disable some of these but uh, before we do that I'm going to show you that where you get the option if you click on database engine and go to the option you will see right here you have an option network protocol if you click on here right now you don't see an option and I'll show you why right here if we go back to configuration manager and we look at the SQL Server native client 11.0 configuration 32 bit and you look at the protocols what it means is right now it's all disabled you are forcing any application that's connecting that's wa that wanted to define these protocols uh, in their config file you are actually telling them that oh you can't use these protocols because um, they are all disabled so what I'm going to do is enable all of them and I'm going to cancel this and I'm going to go ahead and go to option again and look at that as soon as I enable them that means that I gave them the option either to use shared memory TCP IP or named pipe so this is one way that you can manipulate right here that which protocol they can configure uh, any application can configure in their configuration file that whether when when they connect with SQL server so once we do that let's say that I am going to go ahead and connect with TCP IP so I'm going to use I'm going to force my connection to use TCP IP protocol not others so I'm going to go ahead and click connect and as you can see it's connected let me disconnect now and I'm going to go in protocols of my particular instance that we just connected I'm going to go ahead and disable this TCP IP and it says that anytime you do with your particular instance a uh, protocol changes you need to restart the SQL service uh, services keep in mind that you cannot do this in the middle of the day this is just a test system just just a demo to make you understand what these options are and what you can do with these options please do not try this in uh, uh, production during your production live time which is uh, uh, you know uh, 8 to 5 or whatever so if you wanted to do these kind of uh, this is emergency uh, I would say in case of emergency you have to do that then you can go ahead and do that but uh, always do it after hours so click OK and we're gonna go ahead and restart the services all right our services are restarted so what we're going to do now is connect and go to options and we're going to say that okay use TCP IP and keep in mind up here we have TCP IP disabled so what I'm expecting now is that if I use TCP IP it is going to reject my connection it's not going to let me in in SQL server so let's go ahead and try that 
I clicked on connect and it is not going to let us in and you will get an error which is a very common error and I'll tell you that uh, it could be this problem right here network related problem and as you can see right here configuration allow remote connection it is rejecting any remote connection that's coming on TCP IP it's not gonna let uh, any application that is using TCP IP to read the data from SQL Server or connect to SQL Server so when you get this error this could be the problem and also your SQL Server might be down uh, also SQL Server your DNS cannot resolve the SQL Server name up here so there are numerous um, uh, you know reasons believe me to have this error but basically the basic idea behind the scene is that you cannot connect to SQL Server so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and I'm going to go ahead and now enable our TCP IP and I'm going to go ahead and restart the SQL services one more time and see after enabling this TCP IP if we can connect to SQL Server alright so it started so let's we're connecting with TCP IP again so we're going to go ahead and connect and there you go we're connected with our SQL Server using TCP IP just because if you look at right here we have enabled TCP IP so this is how you can manipulate the protocols connecting to SQL Server coming from different applications in your network so let's go ahead and spend time in creating the aliases right here you have two options one is a 32-bit configuration and other is 64 configuration so mostly if you um, I wanted to show you real quick right here if you look at uh, um, SQL Server Management Studio it is using MDAC uh, right here it is not using SQL Server native client so any SQL Server um, in any application that is uh, connecting with SQL Server and using the native client then it is going to use uh, uh, mostly the 64-bit and um, uh, can access the newer uh, feature of that particular SQL Server instance but uh, MDAC right here tells me basically that uh, SQL Server Management Studio is has a tendency to first connect with the SQL Server using 32-bit call so what I'm going to do right here we have SQL Server native client 11.0 11 configuration 32-bit and this is 64-bit so let's go ahead and create an alias sometimes there are a couple scenarios why you create alias um, number one I just uh, mentioned that uh, let's say that your SQL Server instance is too long and your um, application is limited for uh, uh, just specific characters then you don't have to really use all the SQL Server uh, in uh, SQL Server name the machine name backslash the instance name then you can go ahead and create an alias and give that particular alias to that application and they can connect to it the other is that if your SQL Server is in DMZ that is outside of your network and only way that you connect with your SQL Server is using IP address and the the uh, port I'm gonna show you real quick let's go in configuration and we're gonna go ahead and look at the port that this particular instance is using right here is the port 52668 so I'm going to go ahead and copy this port and I'll show you how to connect using IP address and port and let me show you So this is the IP address 192.168.1.44 so let's go ahead and use Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and connect with using IP address and the port of SQL Server 44 and you put comma right here and plus the port this is my port so I'm going to go ahead and click connect 
and there you can see right here it is connected with the same instance TBS client SQL mirror sometimes if your SQL server is in DMZ it is in outside your network you cannot connect with the name of uh, name and instance of the machine of the SQL server and you need to use IP address and the port of that particular SQL server you can go ahead and connect that however sometimes you don't want the applications really to use IP address hard-coded and uh, uh, port in their config file what you can do is create an alias for them and tell them that use this alias to connect to SQL Server and this is what we're gonna do right now so I'm gonna go ahead and go in configuration manager and as I said that it is using MDAC so we're gonna go ahead and create alias right here in 32-bit right click on the aliases click click on new and I'm going to say this is name fraud SQL production SQL this is the name alias name that I want to give and this is the port number that we just looked at of this server right here the server if name cannot be uh, resolved you can put IP address up here 44 so apply click OK and let's go back let's look at it again so alias name is PRODSQL so we're gonna go ahead and connect with SQL Server using alias prod SQL I'm sorry right here as you can see that we connected using the alias right here with the same instance so this is how you create alias and I also uh, told you a couple of uh, options there are many other options really many other scenarios where you need to use uh, aliases but I just wanted to mention real quick that there are certain scenarios that you can use the alias and uh, using alias is is pretty good and sometimes it helps a lot and um, we went through the again let's go back to we went through the SQL Server Services view, configuration, SQL Server protocols, SQL Server native client overview, and alias configuration. And we did some demo to support all the um, ideas that we had, all the uh, concepts that we had. Uh, so that's it, guys. I hope this helps.